Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us again tonight. Tonight we're starting a series on being comfortable in your skin. So that is being confident. That is knowing that you matter. And as long as you matter and you take note of that, then it doesn't matter what the critics say, right? I'm grateful to be joined here again with me tonight with my co-host, Miss Malaya Bray. And uh, tonight it's all about me. Uh, tonight I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask questions, um, give you an opportunity to uh, just uh, to take a glance into my world. I appreciate you guys taking out your time every night to uh, be here with us because we know that the hour grows late and that uh, you could be doing so many other things and sleeping as well. So it is just indeed an honor that uh, you take the time to join us each night. So if you have a question and you would like to message that question in, you can text that question to 580-374-1235. And I'll do my best to get your questions answered here while we're live. Nevertheless, we're going to get started. Uh, being the person that I am, I call myself socially challenged in so many ways because uh, I am not your social butterfly. And for anyone who has ever met me and for anyone who's ever um, heard anything about me, one thing that I know for certain that you haven't heard is that I was the social butterfly. I've always been kind of personal and isolated of some sort. And so this that uh, I'm doing now. It, it is just something new and different uh, for me. So um, I'm vulnerable tonight and it is not an easy place to be, uh, to share, but nevertheless, um, I'm grateful. Go ahead and like and share this video. And um, I just want to give you uh, first a uh, uh, kind of a background about uh, who I am. I am the second uh, born child to a teen mother. And she raised my sister and I for nine years as a, a single mother until my brother came along. And then she had three of us that uh, she raised on her own. And we seen some challenging times and we've seen some good times uh, being that she was a teen parent uh, having two of us before graduating uh, high school i learned throughout the years that she put her goals and dreams and aspirations on hold so that she could be a parent to my sister and i now, along with that, uh, being a teen uh, parent and being young, uh, we kind of watched her grow up. We watched her over the years grow into her own uh, woman. And like I said, that came with some challenges as well as some uh, good times as well. She was fortunate enough to have a mom that was very supportive and uh, was there to help not only her mom, but uh, family as well, other family and things as well. So needless to say, most of my childhood, as I think back and remember um, on some of the things, I spent a lot of my childhood depressed and somewhat sad. And a lot of it was because of a lot of the 
uh, hidden secrets that some families have that, you know, uh, during the 70s and 80s, in the time we lived, some things, you know, we just did not talk about. And now I know today that um, there's, there's no one to blame. Our life is what it is. We learn, we live, and we grow, and we move forward. One thing that I can say is that I think my mom did a pretty good job for what she knew and the resources that she had during that time. I can never remember a time going hungry. She worked all the time, and we were poor, but I really didn't know uh, just how poor we were and just how many sacrifices single parents had to make in order for us to be as well as we are. So for that, I am grateful. I had a legacy of women uh, live before me that uh, showed enormous amount of strength. Um, they didn't let a whole lot get them down. And I knew that sometimes there were issues that they were pressed with, but um, it's one thing that, that I've learned from uh, my legacy and my lineage is that as women, we band together and, and we make it happen no matter what, we stick together. We're there for one another. So that's one of the things that I stand on now and that helps give me strength when facing difficult times in my own life. So very fortunate. Uh, I did not want children um, in, in my early years. That, that was something that um, I felt very strong on uh, because of so much trauma and the emotional uh, distress and issues that I was dealing with which later led to uh, substance use and uh, maybe even some substance abuse. Uh, when I look back at it now, uh, I was scared. I was scared to bring another human into this world and subject them to some of the traumas and disappointments that I have had in life. Now, with that being said, my greatest fear was that if I were to parent a child, I would be an abusive parent. And so for years that haunted my thoughts. But having children now, when I look at it, has been one of the most fulfilling things that I have ever done in this world. Now, that's not to say that I've been perfect. That's not to say that I haven't done things wrong, but it's to say that I feel as though I've done the best that I can, the best that I could with the knowledge and the resources that I had for the times of raising my two young women. So um, I invited uh, Millie to record with me here tonight so that she could maybe get some insight to you on what she thinks of me as a mom, because I could sit here and think that I'm the best or or even doubt myself, but to hear it from her perspective, uh, maybe that'll kind of give you some insight on what it was like uh, me raising my children as a mom from a different point of view. Are there any like specific? Things? Just whatever what you'd like, like them to know about your mom. Okay. I feel like people don't get like a good 
I guess, interpretation of like who you are. Cause you, like you said, you're not very social. So they see you and like, you're not all smiling and people's face. And so they just think, oh, you're just this mean, mean woman. But it's like anybody who really knows you know that it's not true. So anybody who says like you mean or she just hateful, they they don't they don't know you. <laughs> so it's like growing up, like thinking about like younger years, it was just. It was a, like, you was a good mom. Like, we just had a happy childhood. Like, I don't. Like, people say nobody's going to love you like your mom. But, like, it was just so different. Like, it didn't feel real. Like, we felt so loved and so safe. Like, I never, I wasn't very social, like, in school or anything either. So, I was always by myself. But you were, like, the only person I could just come home and just be myself with. Without feeling like, because people thought that about me, too. That was just this me. And this is hateful person, and it's like, you don't even know me. But, um, in a sense of making, like, raising us to know that it's okay to be your own person. You don't have to depend on what other people think about you to know who you are. I feel like that was the greatest thing you could have taught us. Cause like yeah, being out in the world now, like it's not, it's not easy. People are always gonna look at you and make a judgment or like say you're this or you're that. And it's like, no, you don't get to say who I am. I know who I am. Cause you taught us that. I thank you so much for uh, sharing that. I know it must be tough, even for me as your mom, sitting here uh, listening to those words. Definitely not tears of sadness, but tears of gratitude. It's like a medicine to know that as, as a single parent, doing the best that I could, knowing that I didn't always do things good that I instilled some value uh, within you so that you can take it with you uh, as you uh, experience the world for yourself. So uh, that just makes my heart just a little bit warmer tonight. So I appreciate you sharing that. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Okay. It makes all the difference in the world and uh, I hope that, that if that encourages a parent maybe listening or out there today is that uh, we don't have to do everything right. But what we do have to do is do the best we can with what we have. There's no time for excuses. We don't get do-overs. Every moment is a moment to cherish because Life is not promised. We don't know when we give birth to these babies or when we entrust it with one of these children, how long we have with them. Um, life is short. And sometimes just a little too short. And so I appreciate you guys uh, joining in with us tonight. Uh, I see some of you just log it in. Like I said, tonight, I don't take it lightly. Tonight, I am giving you an opportunity to know me 
in who I am. And I appreciate so much you guys sacrificing the time that um, you sacrifice to be here with us every night. So being that we're on the section, a series of being comfortable in your skin, I thought it important that you guys get an opportunity to know me and who I am and just invite you into a portion of my life, my everyday life. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a person who likes to put on a fake or a show for anyone. It is never my intention to uh, try to impress you. It is never my intention to have you follow me and worship me as if I'm some God. I am just simply someone who loves people and however different you feel like you are, however um, you've made mistakes along the way, no matter where you are in life, what matters to me is that when I'm having a conversation with you or you have an opportunity to meet me or whatever the situation is, is that when you leave my presence, you leave my presence being a better person, knowing that you matter and that nobody else's opinion of you gets to dictate who you are or who you can become in life. So that's what's important. Uh, I live on the pillars to educate, empower, and encourage. And if you're having a conversation with me, if you're socializing with me, and I haven't done one of those three things in the midst of our company together, then I failed. And that's the way I look at it. So I try to make that the grounds on which I stand on and live on as well. Millie, can you get me a paper towel there, please? So Millie just gave you an account of who I am as a mom. I invited my husband to uh, join me tonight to talk about me as a wife to get his opinion. And uh, he, he didn't feel up to it tonight and that's okay. Um, it would be uh, unfair for me to say that I could tell you how he views me as a wife, but uh, I can't read his mind. And so for me to give his opinion, uh, on it, then I would be misleading uh, you in that sense. How I feel as a wife and how I think I uh, do as a wife um, may or may not add up to way, the way he thinks, but how I feel um, as a wife, um, I feel like I do the best that I can, but then I see areas and ways in which I know that I could put more effort and do a whole lot more. Uh, I don't feel like I'm the wife of the year. Uh, and I, I believe I owe that to all those years of being uh, single and just having a strong mind and always having that control and just like having things done my way. And so being a wife, I had to, um, you know, just kind of loosen the strings a little bit because when you become a life partner with someone, it's no longer all about you and the decisions that you make. Uh, now you have another person to include in that. And I think sometimes, as you heard me say in earlier recordings, that sometimes we can be so selfish, so selfish-minded that uh, we want it 
and it's all about me, 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 but yet we want to be in a relationship and relationships just don't work that way. Now, I've never read the handbook on how to be the perfect wife, but one thing that I do know that as I grow and become more confident in who I am and learn um, what's my needs and learn uh, what works for me and what don't, then I know that regardless of what, whatever role I'm playing in life, I become better in that relationship also becomes better as a result. Me as a professional, I am a public school teacher. I started my career uh, at the age of 20, 21, uh, being a uh, licensed nurse. And I did that for several years uh, before some unfortunate events uh, forced me into a career change. And now that I look back at it, uh, I believe that it was in God's will that he has uh, designed my pat path the way that he has. Because early in my career, I was a single parent with two young ladies. And if any of you are familiar with the nursing field, you know that the nursing field does not always accommodate being a single parent, having to leave your children with uh, other people and uh the hours that you have to commit yourself to that uh, job and just so many different things. It, it just wasn't suitable for me and my family. So I, I made, being that uh, some unfortunate events occurred, I made the decision to go back to school and I changed careers. At that time, I uh, decided that I'd become a teacher. And then that way as my kids got older, I would have the same schedule as them. And um, so I became a teacher. And as they were growing up, I thought that being that I had now this education that I could come back to my hometown and secure a job in the hometown school and watch my children grow up. Well, it never happened that way for me. I applied for the school several years in a row. Never once have I gotten an interview. Never once um, had I even been offered a job. As hurtful as that was, I decided that I would keep searching. And so the first uh, job I got as a teacher, I had to drive two and a half hours, I believe, two and a half hours away. And I worked that job for half a year. And I just gave it up all together and started working at our local uh, technology school uh, part-time as a nurse instructor for uh, the CNAs and a new program that they were uh, bringing in. Then when the law passed that you had to have insurance for you and your family, I decided I'd better get out there and start uh, looking for a more uh, steady job with benefits. And there, uh, Broken Bow Public Schools trusted me to uh, work in their schools and I've been there ever since and yes there in the beginning it was hard for me to grasp why do I have to drive an hour a day away from my family to a job that I could work right here in my hometown and it bothered me for a long time but when I came to terms that, you know, God is in control of my life and he knows the situations. And, and I've watched so many things occur over the years. 
between my uh, community here. And I've learned so much in the Broken Bow Schools. I have a, a boss that I love and a team of coworkers that I respect so much. They've helped me learn to trust again. And I, looking in now, I don't think that I could have got that here in my hometown. So I think that it was necessary. I think that um, all of this has been orchestrated throughout the years. But my passion is here in my hometown with our kids and seeing them do well. So as a result of that, of, of my rejection and of, of feeling like uh, I don't fit in here, I was able to open up my own school through my nonprofit. And that has been the most fulfilling uh, thing that I could have ever done. So now I can teach the kids on my term as they enroll in my school for an extended day. I can also teach the adults. Uh, I can teach things like professional development and uh, business ownership and so many other things that I've been allowed to do freely through that nonprofit. And that's just as a uh, result of all my uh, heartache. And so having to commute an hour to work every day, that commute each way eventually became my university because I began to educate myself. And as I educate myself, I began to, it began to open up a whole new world for me. That's when I got to know who I was. And uh, that has been the most fulfilling thing in my life over the past few years. I just feel like I'm in such a better space uh, mentally and emotionally um, and spiritually because it has uh, really been an eye opener for me. Now, I don't know if you guys have questions for me. I do see a couple comments and I appreciate you guys joining me here tonight. I'm just giving you an insight into my world uh, so that you'll know a little bit about who I am since you sacrifice so much of your time to join me uh, every evening. And uh, for that, I'm grateful. If you have a comment, don't forget you can text your comment in to me at 580-374-1235. Uh, also, you can leave a question or a comment in the comment section. I don't know that I'll be able to see all of them if you do it that way. So the phone is here if you'd like to text in a question. If you're joining me and I haven't uh, addressed you yet, go ahead and hit that like button and share this video. Um, so that others on your timeline uh, may want to join in as well. Um, who I am, what you see is what you get. I am one who is confident and comfortable in my own skin. There is no doubt about it. The good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, I don't put on a show for anybody. I'm one of those who uh, try to be as honest as I can, but also I'm one of those who understand that just because I think it doesn't make it right. And so it's not fair that I would uh, impart my foolish thoughts or what I think or my traumas upon someone else to cause them pain or a setback. So, when people come to me for advice, that's one of the things that um, they make it known is that they trust me. And so I'm always careful of the information I share. I'm always careful of the consulta consultations that I give out because whatever I say, I don't want to do people any harm. Now, that's not to say that what I say 
uh, in return will not hurt your feelings or cause you to feel some kind of way, but I'm not doing it with an intent or a motive to do you harm or to cause you to feel less than. I'm always careful of how I interact with young ladies um, because I realize that it is not easy. And a lot of times we're just beating these young ladies up and never give into account that we were that young lady once. And so we're so quick to judge a lot of times and that's where we go wrong. And so I didn't want to be that woman to beat up on the young lady that was trying to um, find her way. You make your mistakes the way you make them, just as I've made my mistakes the way I've made them. I'm not you, and it is not fair if if I impose my issues upon you. So uh, I'm, I'm very careful with that. So I always try to be open. I always try to be encouraging, and uh, hopefully, um, if I'm interacting with a young lady, give them hope because that's one of the things that I believe that in my earlier years, I would have liked to have more of, more hope, just encouragement, somebody just being non-judgmental and just being there to support me and wherever I found myself and just loving me through whatever situation that uh, I've been in. Because ladies, we know that as we look back, there are many times to where uh, we maybe shouldn't have made it out as well as we did, but um, we, we're here. And all of that that we've been through, it helped develop us into the woman that we are today. And for that, you know, how can you go wrong with that? And how can you neglect to give some other young woman uh, that encouragement or that hope that you know that we needed ourselves. We had to look to somebody and it wasn't always easy to find that somebody that we could trust to um, help us through and to make it through some of the most difficult times that uh, we've been through, especially in relationships, um, raising kids, you know, it, and, and, and nowadays it's more difficult than I think than what uh, we had to deal with. I think every uh, generation, every cycle just gets a little bit more difficult. So um, I try to be that mentor for that young lady. And I try to encourage my girls to be sensitive to uh, other young ladies as well because um, we always want to judge people's experiences in their life by our own and their experiences aren't the same as ours. Some, so many of them have, have it so much harder than uh, what we may have, but we cannot uh, unrighteously judge uh, what they're going through or how they deal with things. Because one thing I know that um, there are cycles within our families and if we don't break those cycles, we tend to carry those cycles throughout our life. So I'm very careful to not speak on a lot of things when it comes to that. My, my take on love, uh, what is love? <laughs> what is love? And, <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's an area in my life, guys, where I'm still growing. Uh, I don't know if I really understand all that love is. Um, my impression when I when I think about it in a fairy tale sense, it's uh, different than what the reality of it really is. So I know that I love people, but I'm not certain that it's the love like I was taught or that I assumed or dreamed that it would be. 
So my love is just truth. My love is a support. My love is a, a helping hand. That is what my love is. I'm not emotionally uh, tied in a lot of ways. And I don't know, I, I guess when I say I love you, which I often do, I mean that, but I don't have the uh, pitter patter of the heart and the <laughs> emotional connection, I guess, to just uh, drool over you and just want to uh, be in your space every second of the day. So that's my take on love. <laughs> So how do I know that this is my purpose in life? Um, what I do, I live and breathe it. And it would not be fair to live this life and not leave a piece of me here when I'm gone. So uh, that's the purpose for writing a book. It, it wasn't to impress any anyone. It's just to leave an imprint of who I am here on earth. Um, a lot of people see the book and it says recreating a better me and it's my photo on the front and they assume that the book is all about me and it's not. My book is created to help you be better. Because I am so socially isolated, I may not be able to be in the room with you and sit down and have a conversation uh, to consult with you about a lot of the issues where we often become stuck in our lives. So I put it in a book uh, form so that um, you can do it in a safe place. A lot of people that have read the book and that know me, they say that uh, they're reading a book and it's just like they're having a conversation with me, especially for those that know me uh, on a more intimate level. They say it's just like sitting down and they're reading the words and they can hear my voice. And um, so I, I think thought that was pretty neat, but it is my heart. Um, speaking publicly, uh, like I've grown to do, over the past uh, couple years, th that is my goal to do more of that. Maybe I didn't get the job in the classroom that I wanted or that I desired, but now I have an opportunity to travel and wherever I travel and where I go, that becomes my classroom. So that uh, gives me more opportunity to make an impact in others' lives. And so I know that it is my purpose here on in earth because I would do it no matter what. I will die doing what I'm doing today and that's just all it is to it. And I do it whether it's money involved, I do it whether it's um, other obstacles that get in the way or not. So I will share my message and what I do uh, for the rest of my life. And, and that's no matter where life leads me, it is what it is. I am Ann Bray Smith. I am confident. I am comfortable. And I am so glad to be in my skin because I know that the obstacles that should have stopped me. They didn't. And all I can say is that it's too late now. It's too late now. So whatever comes my way, it just have to come and uh, take its best shot. And I'll continue to be here on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock each night to be with you guys and hope you let um, what I've said tonight has given you a little insight into my world. Nevertheless, if um, you're ready, here is your challenge for tonight. 
so that your name can be entered again into our Easter basket giveaway, which will be given away on Thursday night. If you would go to one of my three websites and share with me one thing that you've learned new about Ann Bray Smith tonight. Share with me one thing that you've learned new about Ann Bray Smith tonight. Your name will be entered again into that giveaway. I appreciate you guys taking out the time to be here with us tonight. Malaya, anything else you'd like to share? No. All right. You guys have a good night. God bless you.